The next set of webcasts deal with the aspect of structure known as stereochemistry, the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms in space. This goes beyond knowing how the atoms are connected together by covalent bonds, but has more to do with the geometry of the molecule as a whole. We're going to begin by taking a pair of molecules with the same molecular formula and the same connectivity and asking whether they're the same or not the same. If they're not the same, they're either enantiomers or they're diastereomers, we want to establish some methods to distinguish between these. Next, we'll look at the geometric property of chirality that's very closely related to stereochemistry, and we'll look at the basic element of stereochemistry, the stereocenter, and learn how to name it. Finally, we'll take a look at molecules that have multiple stereocenters and some of the unique properties when a molecule has more than one stereocenter. Here's a brief reminder of the idea of isomers. Isomers are any two compounds that have the same formula. So these molecules that are shown here both have the same formula C3H8O, and, and therefore these are a pair of isomers. These isomers differ in a very obvious way. They differ by bonding connectivity. The hydroxyl group is connected to the center carbon in isopropanol and the terminal carbon in the n-propanol molecule. Molecules that are isomers that differ by bonding connectivity are known as constitutional isomers. The pair of structures shown here are also isomers. They have the same formula, C6H11ClO. They have the same bonding connectivity, so they're not constitutional isomers. The question then becomes, well, how do they differ? And do they differ at all? Before we answer that question, we need a convention in order to represent three-dimensional information in a two-dimensional representation, like these line angle drawings that are either on a computer screen or a piece of paper. The convention that we're going to use is the wedge bond in order to show atoms that come out of the plane of paper and the dashed bonds in order to represent atoms that go into the plane of paper or the computer screen. The wiggle bond means that we don't know which direction the atom points. It means that there's some ambiguity of the atom's position. Now back to this pair of molecules, we can see that the hydroxyl group in both cases is coming out of the plane of the screen, but the chloro group for the molecule on the right is coming out of the plane of the screen, but in the molecule on the left, it's heading back. These two molecules have the same bonding connectivity, but they differ in the way that their atoms are arranged in space. We call these kinds of isomers stereoisomers. For the molecule on the right, both groups, the hydroxyl and chloro, are coming out of the plane of the screen. They're both going in the same direction. We use the word cis to represent two groups in the same direction. For the molecule on the left, the two groups are going in opposite direction, hydroxyl out, chloro in. Opposite, we use the word trans. Trans isomer on the left, cis isomer on the right. Three-dimensional computer representation of these molecules can be shown by clicking on the structures in your notes. You should be able to match perfectly what you see to the line angle drawing. If you hit the translate button, the superposition of the trans onto the cis isomer takes place, and you can see that every group matches up except in the position of these chloral groups and the corresponding hydrogens that are at those positions. Next, I want you to examine carefully the two structures shown in your notes and ask whether they're the same or not the same. If we can superimpose the structure on the left perfectly with the structure on the right, then they're the same. Otherwise, they're stereoisomers. If we look at the computer representation, you should be able to convince yourself that the molecule on the right matches the molecule on the right in your notes and the same for the molecule on the left. You can turn on this plane and we can clearly see that these two molecules have a mirror image relationship. Every atom on one side of the plane has its counterpart equidistant from the plane on the other side. As to whether or not they're superimposable, hit the translate minus button to bring the two carbon atoms together. Let's turn off the plane. And now what we'll do is try to match every atom by doing a rotation. You can play with the different kinds of rotations, but if we rotate about what's called the y-axis here, we can see that we can almost bring these two into superposition. 
but we'll never get the perfect matching of the fluoral and the chloral groups. Because we cannot superimpose these molecules on top of one another, we conclude that they're stereoisomers. This flowchart summarizes what we learned in this webcast. If we have a pair of structures with the same formula and the same bonding connectivity, we should try to superimpose them. If they can be superimposed, then they are not stereoisomers. If they can't be superimposed, then they are stereoisomers. In the next webcast, we're going to classify different kinds of stereoisomers. But before we do that, why don't you try these two problems on your own?